Hello, good evening everyone and greetings from Hawaii. The Vanquish, which uh, was in the last Bond movie I did. Uh, up until that point I'd been driving BMWs. BMW had, had, had the uh, at the flagship for the Bond car. But my last Bond movie, there it was, the Aston Martin. And I said to my agent at the time, Fred Spector, still a good friend and my agent, I said, I'd love to get one of these. He said, don't worry, we'll fix it. We'll fix it, we'll get you one, easy. I said, fantastic. Fantastic, I said, because you know, why not? And right before they announced that movie, they reneged. They said, No. I said, What? I'm going to work my tail off for the next six months, for the next year. One car. And tomorrow's the press conference. And they say no now. I said, "Look, I, that's just that's just not cricket. Come on now. I'm not going to go near that car tomorrow." Etc. 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 Anyway, Fred, my agent, called back later that night and said, "Yes, don't worry, all's good. You've got a car." I said, "I want it in writing." And they did. They wrote a letter saying that they would build me a vanquish. And one of the joys of making the film was going down to the Aston Martin uh, workshops, which the name escapes me right now, but watching my Aston Martin being built. And I met all these great men who were designing it, putting the chassis together, bodywork. And I went out on the track and I, I spent a whole day driving this machine. And the movie ended and finished and about three months after I finished the film, it arrived at my house, this gorgeous silver, it was diamond flecked. Uh, they'd actually designed it specifically for me, this beautiful silver diamond colored Aston Martin. It was stunning. There was no other car like it on the road. Sadly, uh, <clears throat> it burnt in a house fire, but that's another story. But all that's left of the vanquish are the two nameplates that sat on either door, hand-built for Pierce Brosnan, the vanquish. So two nameplates and eight screws. I have them in a little plug. <laughs> Life. Sir Roger Moore's. Again, I grew up on a saint. I think like every young lad from those days at school, you would draw the saint on your, on your notebook. Uh, and I wanted to have my hair like Roger Moore. <laughs> I remember training my hair and combing my hair to look like Simon Templar. Can you believe it? Yes, I think you can. Good hair. Look at that hair on that fine fellow there. That wild colonial boy. But yes, Sir Roger came to the set. I was very honored and very proud to stand beside him that day, and he was very gracious. 
And of course, I had known him because my late wife, Cassandra Harris, had worked with Roger in For Your Eyes Only. And in some respects, that's where the story begins. My relationship with the character of James Bond. Cassie, my late wife, played Liesl von Schlaff in For Your Eyes Only with Roger. And they filmed in Corfu. And she went out there and I brought the children out, my stepchildren, Charlotte and Christopher. We managed to pitch a ride and go along. And it was so, so exciting. <laughs> To, to be on a James Bond set and to have your your wife be a James Bond girl. And of course we would joke about me being the next James Bond. Again, never thinking or wishing or desiring the role, but just I think every actor has it in his mind maybe to play James Bond. And when the movie came out, uh, we did go out to California and we visited with, with Covey and Dana and they took such good care of us. <laughs> I remember driving, driving home from their home one night and um, you know, I was driving a lime green pacer. You'll have to Google that one. It was an ugly car. I was doing my best James Bond impersonation that night. So that's where my first encounter with the world of Bond came into play. Barbara and Cassie became very good friends. And here we go. Lindy Hemming, the costume designer, again, an essential part of creating the character and had the suits made by Brioni, beautiful suits. And so when you put the suit on, it was like putting on a suit of armor. You really felt like the character it gave you a certain presence. elegance. This sequence right here was my very first day. Bobby Coltrane and I, that hand right there, that right hand, you can see the finger. There is a story, Minnie Driver, I've known Minnie before this movie, she was a friend of my children's. There she is, Minnie, singing Stand By Your Man in Russian. But it was my very first day, that sequence when I put the gun to Robbie's head with the first shot, the shooting anamorphic, you see everything, the camera pulls back. What had happened was I'd sliced this finger open right here, this pinky. And I had to have my hand in a Kleinet splint for about 10 weeks before filming and that splint came off the morning that this very first day of shooting and when your hand is bent like that so long it's really hard to straighten it out and here was the finger and we went for the first take <laughs> for the first take and the finger went doink Martin Campbell said, cut, 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 cut. What the f is going on? I said, don't worry, Martin, don't worry. It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <sighs> God, this is not the beginning. All right, let's go again. Robbie comes to the curb. Sushi, gun to the head. Only three men in the world on that weapon, and I've killed two of them. <laughs> I said, where's the nurse? And so I, I got a band-aid and Martin said, 
He said, get the rubber gun. I said, no, rubber gun, no, 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 real gun. Anyway, I got a band-aid and I stuck my finger down to the gun. We went for the take and it's in the movie. There you go. On the top, gets me in her clutches. So calm, so over the top. And that's where, you know, again, trying to play this role, I could see Roger's way of playing it, I could see Sean's way of playing it. And I stole from both, uh, because both had meaning to me. And once I allowed myself to do that, I was free to find my own personification as the character. <coughs> and it's trusting, trusting yourself, having the confidence in yourself to stand there and deliver. hot in here. I want to open the doors, but if I open the doors you won't be able to hear me because the chickens will be out there and the trade winds will be blowing in. So uh, I'll stay put. Quinton, uh, he was out to kill Bill too. And, uh, he wanted to meet me and I went up into Hollywood one day from the beach and I met him at the Four Seasons. I got there at 7 o'clock. I like to be punctual. I'm always punctual. 7.15 came round. No Quentin. He was upstairs doing press on Kill Bill. And uh, someone sent over a martini. So I had the martini. And uh, I waited. It was 7.30. And I thought, well, where the heck is he? Word came down, apologies. So I thought, well, I'll have another martini. And uh, eventually he came down and he started ordering apple martinis. Well, we were fairly snockered. I was fairly snockered. But he did. He was pounding the table, saying, you are the best James Bond. I want to do James Bond with you. And... It's very close quarters in the restaurant. I said, Quentin, please, calm down, calm down. But you don't tell Quentin Tarantino to calm down. Why is that beeping? Anyway, he wanted to do James Bond. I went back to the shop and told them, but it wasn't meant to be. No Quentin Tarantino for James Bond. Shaken, but not disturbed. <laughs> Bond. I remember going out and throwing my bags in the car and just as I closed the boot there was Sean Connery hello Sean are they paying you enough money <laughs> that's all he said are they paying you enough money well I said well you know better than I do Sean anyway, we had a nice chat we stood there and talked about this and that. He'd come down to the studio to get a haircut. <laughs> he's, a, he's a hard character to get away from. Not that I wanted to get away from him because, you know, I am the man I am and, uh, you know, you use so much of one's own persona in playing a character like this that there is a there's definitely a, a melding of the two people the two personas I'm just not very good with gadgets <laughs> <coughs> or laptops. <clears throat> we 
would you return as a villain? If asked, yes. Enjoy your life. You did a magnificent job, Daniel. You were truly a great Bond. Really, hats off to yourself. I've enjoyed watching you very much. You took the bull by the horns and you ran with it all the way. So, the world is your oyster. You can do anything you want. <coughs> Stay well. We did pass in the night, Daniel and I, when uh, my day was done. I knew that Daniel was going to be and had been offered the part and he was very he was very apprehensive about it and I remember sitting by night we were in a club we were having a great time with friends and oh he was really wrestling with it and I just said go do it you can do it you'll be brilliant you'll kick yourself if you don't snap out of it and go be bond and boy did he ever mm. Thanks for watching. These videos are tremendous. You'd better like them too or I'll be back.